these readouts of a bunch of different processes. So you're gonna, so yes, right now there are proteomic clocks, there are glycan clocks, there's methylation clocks. Um, even though I work mostly with methylation clocks, I acknowledge that they are not capturing everything we want to capture about the aging process. Mm -hmm. They're just showing you a sliver. So how do you combine all of these things, which are hopefully at least to some degree independent. So people have always been kind of fixated on are the proteomic clocks, they want them to measure the same thing as the epigenetic clocks or, you know, the metabolomic clocks. And, you know, they say, oh, there's a problem. They're not giving you the same readout. I think that's good because that's more useful information that we can kind of put together to give us kind of a more multidimensional picture of aging. If, if we just got redundant information that it would not be as useful, um, we'd kind of be reaching our, our kind of threshold for how much we can kind 